everything in. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> All right, called me to order seven o'clock. Um, do you have any public participation? Hey, Judy, you're on mute. Um, I just wanted to let everyone know the public forum for the open space and rec plan update is Thursday, April 27th at seven o'clock via Zoom. And then we'll have a public survey after that um, for the following couple of weeks. So it's um, going to be the similar setup as the um, vision meetings, which are the breakout groups and smaller discussions that will be facilitated by the consultants, the Boise Witten group. Judy, do you know how many they're anticipating having? No idea. Okay. I'm hoping it'll be a good turnout. It's hard to tell. Okay. So we should encourage people to go. Yes, that would be great. What was the date again? Sorry. April 27th. 27th. That's seven. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't think we have enough to vote on the minutes, right? Yeah, we can table it till the end of the meeting. Okay. All right, let me share. Melissa, do you know if more folks are coming? Did people let you know? I know that Tiana is not going to make it. I don't know, but uh, and Fiona, one of the student members, is not going to make it. I don't know about anybody else. I think okay. Tom is traveling, so I doubt he'll make it. Okay. Um, how many people do we need for quorum? Um, it's a good question. Uh, we need six, I think. I think we have six. Uh, or no. like. We don't have, oh, Myra, oh, Myra said, all right, we need six voting members. We have six, right? We do. When yeah. do the new members um, start? Not until the next meeting, right? Next meeting. Okay. Yeah, the town council vote on them? Yes, we did. We okay. took the recommendations oh, of Sean the committee. Okay. All right, I didn't see Sean came, so we do have six now. There were six, yep. All so right. if someone wants to give a motion for the meeting, members, we can do that if they want. Um, uh, motion to approve the March meeting minutes. Uh, second. All right. Uh, Chris. Yes. Julie. Yes. Robin. Yes. Myra. Yes. Sean. Yes. I mean, yes. All right. It's approved. Uh, next item is just recapping the recycling and sustainability event that was last Saturday, um, put on by Representative Liber Garabedian. Um, I think it was a pretty good turnout. Uh, it was a bit chilly, but um, I think, uh, and I think having it on Easter weekend may have uh, reduced the numbers a little bit, but um, I think it was good. Uh, there was a lot of people dropping off stuff for recycling and reuse. Um, we did, our, our toy swap was not that successful. So, <laughs> unfortunately, um, but we tried it. And so we now we know. 
Um, we did collect uh, three large bags of styrofoam, but next time I think we need to advertise that a little sooner. So you live, you learn with these things. Um, there was a lot of people interested in, um, we had a sign up for, for people who were interested in touring the, uh, the MRF uh, recycling facility. So we had a lot of people that were interested in that. So we're, um, it's a good thing. We're still working on uh, seeing who else is interested in getting a, a date set for that. Um, and then I taught a lot of people about black plastic, so. Overall, pretty good day. Um, so next item is talk about Earth Day. Um, I don't know if, I think Robin, you were kind of looking into maybe doing something, I'm not sure. Yeah, I reached out to DBW and um, Conservation. DBW told me to call the tree warden, which I never had a chance to do and others said oh well you could be tree, uh, you know trail i just haven't really been able to think about it or do anything yet but um you know my two ideas with collecting garlic mustard or you know cutting down bittersweet you know early may is also a great time for that so maybe it's something i can buy a little time on we'll see okay. do we know if uh, the high school uh warrior uh are doing a cleanup I have not heard. Oh, but maybe well. Maybe. I heard uh, May twentieth being. Uh, Maggie uh, was talking about as a date. I haven't confirmed with her, but uh, that's what she sort of had. I mean, a little bit later than Earth Day. Um, but I, I'm not sure that she. I, I think it'll be worth connecting her with. I, I'm not sure that she still has contacts at the high school. I know Sophie was really involved. Um, and so I don't know, I should, I should check in with her and just see how she's feeling about it. Um, and if she wants to do it, I know friends of Lake Q was doing a cleanup later this month at the end of the month, maybe. Um, but, uh, but yeah, she was talking about May 20th. So I, I just got an interesting constituent request, which may, might fit Earth Day planning. So apparently there's a large amount of daffodils at the head of the lake that are going to be destroyed during construction. And the Hartshorn House or the Crystal Garden Club of Reading and Wakefield would like to know if we can relocate them to the Hartshorn House or the library. Maybe that's a community project. Yeah, plantings. So taking and something it, that's going to be, I, okay, I just, I literally got this like a couple hours ago and it went to <laughs> Well, I got it this afternoon, so I haven't talked to anybody, but um, Robin, maybe that's, you know, people come out and help dig up to get daffodils and then move them. Is this the time of year to do that? It's not. not well, if they're fully it, bloomed, probably not. It, it won't make them happy, but that's not to say the, bu the bulbs won't, won't survive and still work next year. Or sometimes if they get cranky, they may be stressed and they'll take a year or so to have them come back. But if, it, if the alternative is that they just get destroyed, then what's the loss other than, right. you know. So know. If, there's the, any, if there's any interest in this group to like to the, to make that happen, then we can talk about it. But so the gardening club wants to go on private pop, property and take out their daffodils, is that? Or is the, is the development saying, hey, who wants them? Well, I think we'd have to coordinate with the development. I don't think anybody's ad addressed the development on this, but, uh -huh. but but the town has a very good relationship with the developer. Um, and I think if the environment, you know, we came and said, listen, we'd like to help facilitate this. Um, where, is the, where is the development? It's the top of the lake. It's the big new development at the top of the lake that's going to start construction soon. Okay. Um. They better I not wonder. be tearing down trees. <laughs> oh, I'm sure they will. There's some trees coming down, but there's a lot of land being kept in conservation, kind of over to the right of where the parking lot is now, and maybe even at, and I think in the end, there'll probably be more trees around. Um, and they won't touch the, they won't touch the, my understanding is we have a right of way along the lake that will not get touched at all, so. Those trees along there won't go. Anyway, that's, Julia, that's completely I wonder whether, random. 
I, I think there are also some parks around, you know, that we could also think about is, I mean, I know Hot Run House, they have like their manicured gardens, which look great right now. Um, but I think about Patty Heights and maybe JJ Rounds as other places where, you know, like daffodils are beautiful springness. Um, and so there might be some other places that are town owned um, that, that, you know, daffodils also are not, at least I totally ignore mine and they keep blooming. <laughs> Me too. Uh, so it's like, a, you know, we could put them in somewhere and not have to have a huge amount of maintenance. I know, you know, obviously not where they're going to get mowed over, but um, Patty Heights especially is is a park That's where a it would be idea. great to see like some native plants too, or some pollinator plants. Because um, it's it's like an open space and, the, and it, there was a sort of garden development as an Eagle Scout project some years ago, um, but it never has really taken off. And, um, you know, I think there could be, it could be a cool place for, for some um, pollinator focus and some just niceness. Yeah. Okay, well, Robin, I didn't mean to jump on yours. No, no, feel free because I, I, nothing is moving ahead. Um, so I guess the first question, someone would have to, them, you, them mean the garden club or someone needs to ask permission to take them because it is their property. And then right. I think you'd have to ask, the second would be to ask the DPW if they'd accept us planting them on town land. And so, you know, they can be mowed over after they start to die down. I mean, that's kind of the easiest way to do it is it's actually, a, um, it's a style actually where it appears in fields. And then yeah. as they die down, you just mow them over because um, they'll stay dormant through the, the grass, you know, the lawn season. Hmm. Oh, it's uh, not Dutch, but it's something Northern European style. So uh, this, this request actually came in on Facebook. So I'm going to move it over to email. I'll copy you on it, Robin. And, um, I think Steve's going out of town, but let me see if I can start moving it a little bit and see what they say. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd happy to participate and yep. have tools that people could borrow to dig it up. Okay. I'll be a lowly uh, private citizen, but I'm happy to help as well uh, with with daffodil planting and or relocation. Um, yeah, but it, but I think I mean this started the conversation started as Earth Day planning. This is probably not Earth Day related because uh, it would be probably mid to late March, uh, May. That's true. But which is fine. I mean, I don't think we should, should not do it. Um, but. I mean, Earth Day is like two weeks from now or a week from now. 22nd. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of Earth Day things around here are done in May for a variety of reasons. So it's okay. Yeah, school vacation being one of them. Usually bad weather, I think, is a big one too. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if like we want to try to get a small group together to pick up trash at some of the parks around or, you know, just do something really simple. I mean, like, you know, walk around some neighborhoods, pick up trash. I don't know. Uh, great idea. I, I, unfortunately, my April weekends have, are, have been booked for a while, which is part of the reason why I haven't been able to really figure something out. So um, totally support it, but I don't know if I could participate in the month of April. Okay, well, if there's any anybody that hears of any other things or if if people do want to participate in a larger event, um, Stoneham has joined the Keep Massachusetts Beautiful Groups. I, I think that's the acronym. Yeah. Anyways, Keep uh, Massachusetts Beautiful kind of an umbrella, then local towns can host their events. They are having one, I think, this weekend. So okay. that is an I also think we promote Sean's event at the library during Earth Week. Like, I think that's what we should be pushing. His, his base is all around town. I know. <laughs> I, I was in town hall and was surprised to see me looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, we were promoting it this past weekend. So we had a big, big poster at our table. Okay, um, 
So next item is STEAM night, which is going to be on May 11th um, at Galvin. So we were um, approached by um, one of the science coordinators at the, um, I think she does the middle school and the high school, and she's organizing the STEAM night at the Galvin. Um, I think it's mostly going to be geared for um, elementary school students. But um, it is an interactive fair style event, which will showcase and engage families in the work that is going on in our science and math classes education while offering high interest activities beyond the classroom. So they're gonna have like uh, some robotics and some other um, like, I think iRobot may be there or like some other groups like that may be there. And so she wanted us to do a table there. And um, so we're gonna go forward and have a table there. And so I wanted to bring this to everybody's attention and see if you had any ideas for what we should have at our table. I was thinking, um, you know, we could do like, a, like we've done before, kind of like a waste sorting challenge for people to see like, you know, which products go in which bin. Um, that'd be good for kids. Um, I think they wanted to invite Black Earth as well. So we, I think we may be next to them and could talk about composting. But if anybody had any other ideas of what we should do at the table, um, here to hear them. The waste sorting was the first that I came to mind as a great way to have kids understand things. Secto. Yeah. Did Black Earth do like the science of composting since you have, you know, elementary school kids who are participating in composting? Yeah. to sort of describe how it works and, and how long it takes and all the stuff that they do? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if Black Earth is gonna do that, but um, yeah, that's definitely something we thought of. Um, you know, I was thinking something very simple about climate change maybe. Um, Did you just say simple and climate change together? <laughs> I don't know, something, something maybe, else. Maybe part of um, Chris's, maybe some information out of Chris's report, right? Like how, um, I don't know, how many cars, I don't know. I feel like there must be some data there that kids like could just understand and we could simplify like a, a quiz, like a little board or something. The, these steam nights are really, really big. Um, we did them before COVID. I know, um, Sustainable Wakefield did one for a while where we we made this board and we just put Velcro. And we said, where do you think all of our power in town comes from? And we had the kids kind of put them in order. Um, and that was neat. I, I think kids would also really love to, to you know, because they hear a lot about climate change and you, they start to have conversations about it. But even all the sort of a, a board that talks about all the things that Wakefield is doing to combat climate change and all the you know, I, I think putting it together would be really interesting to kids. And there's a lot of different, like there's just a lot, you know, a lot of what the utility is doing and a lot of what the, you know, just a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of different fronts that, that um, action is happening on. Um, and it would make, it might make it more like manageable to, to think about what, what they could do. Yeah, I'd be ideas. willing to work. I know I tear, I should not volunteer for anything, but I'd be willing to work with somebody on that. I mean, I, I do have a lot of books on like talking to kids about climate change, as Myra knows. And the other thing they do with these usually is have um like raffles. So I'd be yeah. happy to put like a raffle basket together of something for kids too. Okay. Yeah, I'll think about that some more too. I like the idea of maybe using some of the information from the GHG inventory and if there's some way to make it kind of like interactive or like a guessing game or something like that that would be that would be fun yeah like if they turn off their lights does it save anything or if they walk to school instead of taking a car like something that's just very like doable 
Yeah, we could have like some questions, like some like multiple choice questions, like which one of these actions do you think reduces your emissions the most or something? Like, I don't know. So Julie, uh, Calvin and his friends, you know, are the Julie Smith Galvin fan club now from the Woodville. Um, and Calvin said he'd be happy to, to pitch in with you. And so I would join in with you too, if you wanted to. Awesome. Um, Let's put Calvin on the committee. Yeah. And, uh, and I think, you know, if you wanted some other kids, I think that there's a lot of kids in that class who are, are right. interested in, you know, we, we can bring some, uh, if you want a student student perspective too, I think they'd be happy to help. That would be great. Woodville just did their science fair. So they're all pumped up on sort of science fairs and what, you know, what it can mean and sort of how you present things. All right. Tell Calvin I need to get on his calendar. <laughs> He's busy. Watch out. <laughs> We need to make one of those like exploding volcano things. <laughs> no. And the, this is climate change. <laughs> okay, well, if anybody can think of any other ideas, um, I was going to fill out a form of like what we're going to have at our table. So um, send them my way. So I can include that on um, what we'll be presenting. Um, all right, updates from subcommittees. <clears throat> so for the waste reduction subcommittee, um, we actually were shooting a video last week at the Walton School on our um, composting and food rescue programs. So we wanted to kind of, um, you know, celebrate the success, show, you know, everybody how well they're doing and um, kind of try to entice other schools to do the same. Um, so WCAT is, is finalizing that video and it should be out soon. So we wanna share it, you know, with everybody. And um, so we will let you know when that's available to share. Um, and, uh, Tiana has been working with the, the health department on, um, what the options are for the recycling at the, at multifamily properties. Um, and there's a meeting next week that, uh, we're going to attend, uh, where they're going to discuss it, what the options are, whether we want to do something through the health department regulations, or if we want to do, um, which we presented at November town meeting. So more to come on that. Um, the other thing was we met with um, the science coordinator as I was saying, we talked to her about seam knife, but we also talked to her about the gallon recycling um, and maybe possibly doing a waste audit there, um, possibly this month to kind of showcase, you know, what kind of trash there is there, what could be composted, recycled, um, all that. So could a good hands-on activity that um, may, you know, take people there to start recycling or maybe add composting and, you know, be a little bit more involved. So we will see um, if that happens or not. We're also thinking about doing some sort of recycling like competition or challenge there to get people more um, interested and involved in uh, want to recycle. So work in progress on that. Um, and I think that is all I had. So uh, next, land protection. All right. Uh, we met on March 29th last. We did have some more public engagement um, uh, with comments on uh, the Vogue site. Um, uh, in terms of the Vogue, I, and I haven't looked to see where this is landed in the last two weeks, but there was some conversation about just the petition for MEPA review uh, had been received and that MEPA had requested additional documentation. Uh, Judy, uh, sorry to call on you. I know your camera's not on, but I don't know if you knew anything, uh, if there have been any up updates on the petition and the information request in the last two weeks. No, I heard it was still under review. All right. I read it. It came out on March 23rd. I can put, I'll put it in the link. Oh no, we don't have a link chat. Um, 
I will send it around. It appears to me that MEPA reviewed um, the project again and again reinforced that it does not need MEPA review. Oh. Um, so you see that came out that on the 23rd uh, or? March 23rd, yeah. it's dated. Yeah, I got something from the friends that I thought it said that their efforts, despite all the public comment, was that it was the state is not reviewing it, that they passed. No, the state. I mean, they. it's a very comprehensive um, letter. It's very much worth reading. Um, there's certain thresholds that trigger MEPA review, and they looked at everything again based on changes since they made their original ruling, and they said that it does not um, trigger any MEPA review, and it didn't trigger a fail safe either. It has something to do about agency review. Um, but I have to tell you, I'm feeling more and more like, you know, I, I'm glad it got a second look. I think that that was an effective um, um, thing that the that the the group did. But I'm pretty comfortable that this thing has been through MEPA review at this point, and is not going to change. And do they provide a, a reasoning behind? Uh, why it wasn't going through another review? Um, it has to be like 30 acres. It's not 30 acres. They so the the petition tried to put in like the energy park as part of the project and the roundabout and all of that, and was determined that that was not part of the project. Um, it has to have it has to kind of uh, endanger. They they said the endangered species, but I guess that determination was made before. Um, uh, I didn't, it didn't go back to the date that was needed. I will, I will send it around. I don't want to just do it off the top of my head. I actually need to write a post on this and, and cause I need to respond to everybody who's been writing me. Um, so I will make sure that everybody on this group get that. Okay. Judy, maybe, you know, more. I don't, um, I'm not surprised, but based on the amount of land disturbance, I thought it would have gotten a more intensive look. Yeah, it's something like they they have like a swap out too. So like where there might be land now, even if it's going to be paved over, other lands going going to be. So there's like these one to ones. It, it has to be a net, and it doesn't rise to it. Now it comes pretty darn close, and they acknowledge that, but it it just misses the threshold in terms of amount of land. Um, and and the good thing is, I also think they're pushing back on the proponents or the school to make sure that they are doing everything they can to minimize um, tree loss and other losses. But yeah, it didn't. It did not. It did not rise to a MEPA review. So it is moving forward, at least from a MEPA standpoint. I think, yeah. I just found the letter. So it says our MEPA fail safe partition and threshold review for the VOC received over two hundred seventy eight comments. Um, the quality, um, this is thanking, blah, 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 blah. Um, sadly, the ruling issued on the 23rd was not in our favor. Uh, we asked for a comprehensive review. So, you know, they, they said all the efforts that they did, but. Um, yes, yeah, so I don't know yeah. what, I don't know what the next steps are. I think when, it's when asked about the process of appealing the ruling, um, the director's response was talk to a lawyer. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. I I feel like this is going to move forward. It's been through M, you know, MSBA and MEPA now MEPA review again. It's likely going to move forward. Well, it's still in front of conservation. So and but you're right. Still, that's still a very yep. active review. Yep. And I guess permit does it need any other permits too, or just concom? A ZBA. It's still building. A ZBA. Yeah. Yeah, and a so new building. It's... Right, they were already what? denied. They received a friendly denial from the building inspector, and that's why they went to the ZBA to um, talk about the Dover Amendment. Yeah, um, but that's pretty perfunctory, I think, isn't it? Well, it, it there, I to me, there's some leeway. Okay, some wiggle okay. room with that, and Are I think that's what down, the ZBA is kind of seems to be struggling with. Okay. Well, we'll we'll leave it to the the adjudicating boards, but that's where I know what I know. This point. Are they supposed to break ground soon? Yes, trees could start coming down this month. That's what the friends claim. I haven't seen anything official. There is actually, as we speak, there is a vote 
school committee committee meeting and they were going to attend so um, they would know better than us because they don't share any information on their project website on schedules so. right um few other things we discussed, uh, the open space and recreation plan uh, process. There'll be a short survey circulated to folks uh, after the April 27th public town meeting. Um, and that survey has been drafted and shared. Um, and uh, Judy, I was just curious, I was, what, there was reference in that survey to Emerald Necklace in yes, as a Wakefield area? What, that's the area I, from the town forest all the way over to JJ Round. Okay. Is that what is, I, I was just a little, we can chat offline about that. I wasn't sure if that name would resonate with everyone. Well, it'll be mapped, so I think that'll help. So oh, okay, yeah. So, so, so there is a, um, uh, um, uh, there is a draft survey that'll go, and then there's uh, some public consultations moving ahead from that. Um, the, uh, another thing we discussed was um, in terms of, uh, land use issues and uh really if you want to talk about this a bit the tax title properties issue um and, and the process the review process that you, we had discussed um yes and judy might be able to help me on this too so we're looking at all of the um all of the land in town that the town for some reason took ownership of usually through owners not paying taxes and so it comes in and, and these go back decades um but what i found during my time on the town council is little parcels come to us here and there usually because a neighbor wants to um acquire a uh, adjacent piece of land from the tax title and then we go out to bid and usually they buy it but the last time that happened i said yeah and these little kind of one-offs really were beginning to concern me. And so we're doing a study of all the tax title and, and it's going to be parallel with the open space plan. And so we're going to try to determine whether there's any land that we own that should just be placed either in conservation or otherwise used so that we're not kind of one-offing these things every time they come up. And it's also to gain some level of protection, especially for the town forest, because that's completely tax title land. Yeah, I mean, I, I think my personal end goal is to get some of this land into, into conservation, especially given climate and some other things. So the, a, a title examiner has been um, put under contract. So that is in the process. And then there'll be signage at certain areas with a little descriptive. Some of the, there are some areas that are already under um, the care and custody of conservation. And a couple of them um, are wet areas, but there'll be signage indicating their value in terms of you know, carbon uptake, climate change, flooding, um, storage area, things like that. And the other problem is when you start to look at tax title land, you start to see where the incremental encroachment is coming. So that's an issue as well. What do you mean by that? Like, just meaning like, like a, a butters are taking over. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a good exercise. And I think it's consistent with everything we're doing with the master plan and this open space, and everything. Right. And I think people would be surprised at how many areas are tax title around town. And hopefully it'll give a higher value in people's eyes rather than just seeing it as you know a useless open area, an open lot, which tends to be kind of the theme around open space. Right. Uh, final major item we discussed at our last meeting was also just the um, town steward program, the conservation core, um, and that they're uh, this committee has been helping to advertise that uh, through uh, Tiana's work, um, and uh, we had discussed there were had been several applications so far. Judy, I don't know where that number is at now. <laughs> you were going to be onboarding them in a, the next few days, right? 
Um, there were five emails of interest and we've only received one application. So it's okay. going to be on the first um, meeting in May to give people time if they've changed their minds or you know, give them time. They need to sign a waiver and they fill out the application. So only one person has done that so far. Okay. And we've reached out to them again just to gauge their interest. All right, then we should keep advertising and promoting that here. And Judy, I'll send in my email now to make sure I get my application in. So, because um, <laughs> uh, because uh, I'm rotating off of this committee uh, with this meeting, uh, and um, my personal plan is to go and help with the uh, 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 the, the 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 new town steward program. Um, but also, uh, I know we did set up a next meeting of this subcommittee, and that Julie agreed to. Um, at least carry it over there, but hopefully with new people onboarding next month, uh, uh, this is going to be a subcommittee that needs some new staffing as well. So, um, and that's all I really had in my notes of substance. Thank you. Uh, Robin, anything with the buildings? So at the uh, Wakefield High School, they uh, have started um, looking at a schedule for resuming the user group meetings, of which I had been invited to previously to the HVAC and sustainability, which is really more just about the mechanical systems. Um, so they're looking to have a meeting in, in uh, May and June, and hopefully I'll be able to attend. But so they're back on uh, working on the design. Uh, Can you other, tell them that we need dishwashers in the kitchen? It's in their notes from before. Uh, just other building efficiency news. Uh, the 10th edition of the building code um, passed a, a small milestone at the state level. Uh, so it moves on to a public hearing process, which means that it may be available January 1st. So it's it's back on that track to being able to, um, you know, 2024. Um, also, I wanna share on the, in the context of building design, uh, Massachusetts, uh, sorry, the Metropolitan Area Planning Council is hosting a training next week, which I've signed up to, but we'll see if I'll be able to make it. Um, so Melrose, Malden, and Medford are working together with them to collaboratively develop sustainability and resilient building design guidelines for residential and mixed-use developments and retrofits. Uh, they hope these guidelines will help communities encourage developers to build more affordable housing and energy efficient and climate resistant. So I look forward to listening to what those communities are doing and um, maybe we'll be able to uh, learn from them and implement something here along those lines. Sounds good. Um, and I think as far as like the, the building code stuff, um, I think I may invite um, MAPC and maybe the building inspector to talk about the, <clears throat> the specialized stretch code. Uh, I talked to Tom about this and um, just so mostly so like the building inspector has all the information um, since it seems like he'd be um, he seemed to be posing it. I'm not really sure. Julie, you probably know more. I think we just want to make sure that where he's coming from on it. So that's why we didn't get it on this town meeting. Um, but yes, I think that's the right step is to get in and let's talk to him. Okay. I think it passed Lexington this week. Did it? It was may have it was on the agenda for hopefully Monday night, but they have a huge agenda. So, they, I, I was on the call with one of their counselors. I think it passed pretty easily, but they're all caught up on the 3A. That went to the second night on the MBTA. That's what I'm thinking of. So the MBTA, that's right. Um, Chelmsford's, that's also, in, Chelmsford's yeah. also considering the opt-in code. Um, I mean, Boston, my sister's a, what's that? Boston just passed it. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> no, that's no surprise. It's the town meeting level communities that I think are more applicable to Wayfields because more more folks vote. So yeah. Okay. So yeah, just to let you guys know that um that's the plan for next meeting. I think that's a great approach. Uh I don't know, Julie, if 
because I don't know the building inspector. Maybe you want to reach out. I tried people. to connect you guys. Let me go back and see. I think he ended up dropping everybody off the email that I originally sent trying to connect them with you guys. So let me go back and look. Okay. All right. Um, so Dan is not here. And Chris, we haven't had a meeting, so we should probably get one on the schedule for the greenhouse gas inventory. Um, I am going to present it to town council on the 24th. Well, a couple slides at least of it in, in, uh, in addition to what ESC has been doing over the last year. So. Um, Julie, anything with green communities? No, we just, we, we put in um, our request for the grants and I think we're, just, we're waiting to hear. Okay. On do you want uh, do you want me and, and I'm saying us like everybody who's on a committee to do one slide for you? So is that helpful for the 24th? I mean, I asked everybody to kind of give me a summary of what, you know, highlights okay. of each committee. So I can just put what okay. everybody's giving me into slides. It's not a big deal. Okay. Perfect. Got it. I will give you green communities. And I got the um PowerPoint template from Jen. So, um, and Tiana's not here for community education. Sean, I don't know if you want to give her updates. I could, or you could, or we both could. She, uh, yeah, she's not able to be here today because of uh, travel. Um, uh, she shared a few points. First was. Um, presentation that I'm giving at the library uh, on uh, impact of climate change in food and nutrition and the quality of different foods we eat. Um, so uh, that's on May 3rd. Um, and uh, also another item was just following up from the successful uh, event with Gretchen Carey from Republic Services, trying to set up a field trip for the public to the MRF um, and trying to arrange some transportation. And just a side note on that, uh, I just had Gretchen Carey visit a class I teach here at Tufts uh, today, and it was absolutely wonderful. She was talking more about food waste and uh, completely different what, from, from what she shared when she visited our group uh, here, And uh, but tons of information. So I just, um, uh, it, it, it's, uh, she just has so much information on so many things of importance to our communities. Um, uh, also from Tiana, just uh, continuing to set up Instagram as a new way forward and continuing to post frequently on Facebook. And she just asked that everyone keep sending content to her so that she can translate that to the various fora that she is uh, sharing things with. Um, and she said special thanks this month to Robin for many great plant related post ideas. And then uh, her final note here was just about the video project with uh, W. CA team, Melissa, I don't know if we said everything we need to on that or, yeah, so. Um, and then uh, around Earth Day, if there are any things that make for good messaging uh, from the discussion there that we should pass those along as well since she's not able to join us today. All right, thank you. Uh, I had one other Earth Day question that just sort of came to my mind, yeah. uh, which is, uh, w CAT has been very generous in and, and eager to get sort of content. So even if we didn't feel like we could do an event around Earth Day or, or Earth Week, um, you know, if there was anything that we wanted to, you know, even as like background, like one year, like the first year of COVID we did, we asked like people to send in pictures of like what they were doing to celebrate Earth Day. Um, and WCAT was like thrilled and really eager to like, so they put it on there, you know, it's just, just like some of the filler content or some of the background. And so I think if there were also messages like that, that, that around earth, you know, what we can do earth month in May, you know, I, but I just, I do think, you know, um, that partnership could be really helpful or, or fun and just sort of add some of the beautiful, highlight some of the beauty that we have in town too. Uh, to the people who watch it and, and you know even in between like even the, you know even if people don't watch it on tv they watch the sort of facebook feed when uh when they're waiting for julie to come on and, and town council and those kinds of things <laughs> so it's another avenue i think that that may be worth just like if we had uh posts or pictures or something like that 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 could go out in that 
in that forum. Okay. Meyer, didn't you do a nice haiku? That one you first that was That was deep into my haiku period. Yes. Uh, I wrote a lot of mediocre haikus during uh, COVID, and that was definitely uh, one of them. It, it's it was National remember, Poetry I Month. I think we need, it's National Poetry Month. We need to send that to um, uh, Tiana for posting, I think. <laughs> my, my mediocre haiku. It was really, it was like a tie, moment in time of COVID and me writing haikus, but I could try to dig it out. I think you should. It's vintage now. Yeah, no, that's a good idea. We can, uh, I mean, they're going to have some content from our our video that we shot with them at the ball in, but uh, I think, yeah, other stuff that we can send them would be a good idea. Um, yeah, so I can pass that along to Tiana. Maybe she can try to drum up some people to send some stuff in. Um... William, any updates from the schools? Um, so I, I just put up all of the posters for Sean's event around the school and can confirm that we are indeed still recycling, though numbers are not what we would prefer it to be, especially given spring sports starting to get started in April break and everything. So, Are you guys planning anything for Earth Day or Earth Month or anything? We have not talked yet but i can I, I i have some ideas that i'm hoping to to bring up okay thank you um nobody else is here except for julie from our, <laughs> our groups um so i want to go back to my notes here um let's see so i'm um I'm on I'm on the state committee for energy and environment for the Massachusetts Municipal Association, which is basically all of the elected officials and all the town staff. Um, so they had a meeting yesterday that was really interesting. And I don't know whether I don't think we probably need another initiative. <laughs> but um, so they basically they look at all of the state legislation that's coming through around environment and then um, their board gets together and decides what legislation they're going to support this session. And one um, item that the MMA is supporting this this year is um, an act to paint recycling. So they they had somebody on from the Massachusetts Product Stewardship Council, and this is kind of making sure that manufacturers take back you know mattresses. And eventually, some states have even or jurisdictions have even passed like paper and packaging. Um, you're talking the about only, responsibility? Yes, yes, exactly. Um, so the they, the one thing they did kind of implored towns to do was to say, you know, if any town would like to pass a resolution or even kind of have like a, 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 a like, like our committee could say, you know, we are in favor of, um, we, we encourage the act relative to paint recycling. And they have all the data. I don't have the presentation yet. I will send it around when I get the presentation, but it might be something we wanna think about. Um, we could probably quantify how much that would keep out of our trash stream by having at least that paint bill pass. Um, and they think it's hopefully pretty likely to pass this, um, this session, though it's early in the session. Anyway, just something to think about is how, how involved we wanna get in kind of the, the, what do they call it? ERP, they call it. Yeah, extended um, producer responsibility. Yes. So um, anyway, something to think about. And I was actually thinking, Melissa, I don't know. I, I know you have a full-time job, but these are really interesting meetings. They're once a month for an hour and a half. Um, I'm going to see whether I can get you invited to them for when you can come. Because okay. there's, there's a lot of relevant stuff to what we're doing. So I just wanted to bring that up. Um, the other, the only other thing I have is that the um, working group for the MBTA communities is continuing to meet every other Tuesday at the library, and um, it will be posted for this Tuesday, so there will be Zoom as well. Some really good conversations happening around the um, zoning for more dense, um, uh, dense housing, which is the, you know, it's going to be the law, and if they, 
And what I did learn is that the communities that do not adopt that, the the initial thought was they would just forego some grant funding, but now it's looking like the attorney general is going to sue communities that do not comply with. So this is, I, I'm not worried at all that Wakefield, you know, we, we're 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 gonna we're going to comply, but. It's going to be very interesting to watch how some of these communities do it. And one reason Lexington is actually, I thought it was, we talked about this at the MMA meeting, Lexington brought it to their town meeting very early so that they get three bites at the apple. So that if something, you know, something happens, they can, they can go back and kind of rethink it. I don't think it, we're going to bring ours to town. It has to be done by the end of 2024, four, I think. Five, four. Four for us. I think 23 for bus communities, 24 for um, commuter rail communities, which is what we are. Anyway, it's very, very interesting. And I'll continue to update you. It's not directly relevant to commute. I, I personally think it's relevant to the environment because it's all around MBTA. Robin One thing we are going to be talking about is, um, is parking, um, parking minimums. I think that will, I think that will come up. Like there are going to be things that we can layer over this that will be, um, I don't want to say they'll be controversial, but things that we've talked about for the first time in this community. So that will be very interesting. Is that the group oh. that Robin, you signed up for? Okay. Yep. Yeah. So Julian person for the first time in a couple of years. No, maybe since farmer's market. I don't know. Oh, that's meeting. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so did I miss anything, Robin? No, I don't think so. I mean, so we, I mean, just to folks, so as a working group, we'll be meeting for a few months and then we plan to do some yeah. more open public meetings to get feedback on it, but we feel like we need to do more kind of brainstorming and have a plan before it's opened up to get feedback um, and try to have that dialogue and give people the opportunity to to, to understand it and to buy in prior to you know a town meeting so it, it is not something that just shows up and they well, oh absolutely it'll still show up and people will be like what is that but you know an effort that those um do do you know or will uh get a chance to talk is it going to be for november town meeting next year no the timetable i think it won't be until next year just to give people lots of time but we'll see i mean maybe things Gel and you know who knows. Can I ask you a question, Robin or or yep. Julie? Because I know that also the planning board has been doing some work in thinking about the watershed around the lake. Um, and there's a lot of overlap between the watershed around the lake and the MBTA line, and where they might be encouraging higher density housing. So is there is there conversation there about how do you yes. protect the watershed of the lake? So we can't actually count. So we had to do so many acres um, and those acres can't be in a watershed area as they defined, they being the state and the planning board is represented on the committee. So you get that overlap from kind of other thinking. So how much space, I mean, if we can't, if, you know, cause then, cause then you sort of get done with the, the, the Lake Q and then there's also Crystal Lake, which is also mm -hmm. right next to the yep. railway line. So how much land do we have in Wakefield that, isn't in a watershed and is close to the I wouldn't say it's not in a watershed because watershed is you know you take a drop of water and where does it lands right I think is the definition so it's not like that but there's right. x number there's a distance of waterway which we only started getting into at our first meeting where they indicated that the they have maps to share with us to show what parcels would not count because of it and so we you know I think we're going to get some of that detail maybe next week or maybe the one after I can't remember but so we don't know, nothing's decided, yeah. you know, there's no, you know, the den, so the state requirement is 15 units an acre um, you have to achieve, but then you could do pluses and minuses to get that average and so forth, so. And then does it, does the development that I think is coming to where Mike's gym is now, does that count? That was discussed and, and, and the first map they showed us showed that it couldn't because of its relationship to, Crystal Lake, but I, I have questions. So I want to learn more about that. Wait, Mike's gym is being torn down? There's a development in front of planning for it. In front of ZBA, is it in ZBA? Oh, maybe ZBA, I don't know, one of the boards. I see it it's on the It's at the Zoning Board of Appeals. 
Um, two, 200, 200 units? Maybe? It's a lot of units. That's a huge space. It's just like huge parking lot. It's such a waste. Yeah, um, it's worth watching. I watched the last, I don't know whether it was the last, maybe it's two ZBAs ago. The The first design they had wasn't great, but they came, the ZBA asked them to do some other things and it's 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 an interesting building there. The interesting thing about this MBTA is that you can't have mixed use. That came up on the MMA call this week too, that the communities are very, very upset about the yeah. mixed use not being allowed. Why is that? To maximize the residential space? I guess. Huh. I well, guess. So 15 units an acre doesn't have to be that big. I mean, what I had heard a presentation was, was that when people think mixed use, it starts to get four or five stories and you don't have to be that big. This is all about what they call the missing middle. And so, um, you know, not forcing everyone to live in like large developments that, you know, you create the, um, a tight triple decker that qualifies, you know, so people don't, you know, can have an, or a, you know, a, a Philadelphia style two over two. Um, and, I, and so I'm guessing that's also part of it is that it, it, it has that other housing option as opposed to people having to live above commercial or so forth. It'll just affect how the zoning happens because we want to keep, I think the idea is that we want to keep mixed use kind of in the downtown area. So the zoning we'll do for this will probably avoid certain areas like that. And that's all I have, except that Melissa and, the, and anybody from the committee is invited to the town council meeting on um, the 24th to just give a highlight of everything that we're doing, as she said. Um, I know we want to go deep into things. I'm, I advise kind of Melissa, like I, we're doing so much. I think we touch on all of it and then we give them just enough and then hopefully they'll invite us back to talk about things like the greenhouse gases and um so how many minutes do I have oh you can have 10 to 15 and we'll ask questions it's just it's a tight that meeting is a tight meeting um I think there's just a lot going on but um I really want to get us in there in April and we haven't done an update in a while and then we can come back and, and get more time for digging deeper anybody wants to show up and support <laughs> Or online, you can be on Zoom or in person. And remember the election is um, April 25th. So the following Tuesday, that Tuesday is election day and you can start voting now at town hall. Don't have to wait till election day. Sounds good. Thank you. Sure. Um, so the met the next scheduled meeting would, is the same night as steam night, so we need to reschedule um, our May eleventh regular meeting date. Um, does anybody have any issues with the tenth, or do you want to move it to the eighteenth? What are people's feelings? Hold on, I gotta look at my calendar. either one i think works for me um so town meeting opens on the 15th do you know it's following nights julie oh that's an excellent point i, I don't like that they don't present the following nights because we always take more than one night really um, oh yeah yeah on budget ones we usually do I guess we didn't during COVID. We really worked hard not to, but um, let I gotta say I, I like those Saturday morning ones. Yeah, I, I know morning. we're just mixing it up a little bit. <laughs> in in May, it's tough with um, you know, sports and and yeah, yeah. I, I, and yeah. things like that. Um, well, so that's why I. I would not suggest the 18th because if it's not a town meeting, the would it usually goes Tuesday. Monday, Thursday. Well, I was gonna say, even if it was the Wednesday, I that would be the third night in a row I've had town meeting or meetings for the town. So I having a fourth would be so maybe we do it the week or before. Yeah, do you want well, we can't do the week fourth is eleventh. You mean the fourth? Oh no, not the fourth. Sorry. Fourth is 
Um, what a Wednesday work, or you want to keep it on Thursday? I can do the. Can people do the tenth? Yes. I mean that's Chris. two nights in a row because we'll be at Steam the next night, but. Yeah. Chris, does the tenth work? All right. Let's see who May tenth. All right, any other matters not anticipated? We should note that there may, we'll have the new members, whomever they may be, um, and that we usually do election of officers. Okay. If anyone wants to take over? Or take the may, for the, that next meeting or the meeting after? Uh, I went back, my notes from last May was we did the election. So it's the first meeting with the new folks because but they don't know anybody. How are they going to vote? I don't know. Sean, Sean and Chris, it what did you do? Chris and Sean, what did you guys do? It has not been historically uh, like a competitive thing. Um, <laughs> That's so true. Like, you know, you were kind, Melissa, to, to take, let me off the hook. Uh, so it was not, uh, there were, there has not in the four years that I've been on the committee, there has not been a contested election for officers. <laughs> not that there won't be, but Myra, do you have any parting words or Sean? Your last well, one? I'm gonna get all sentimental now. I mean, I will say this. I mean, I feel like I've been such a no-show delinquent these last couple of months, so I apologize to you all. <laughs> but I uh I this has been like a really thrilling really fun time for me like the four years that I've served on the committee and I can't believe the amount of things that that you all do and the committee has done um and I think back to sort of where we started um and even though like you know we've been not doing this by zoom for so many years and like we're long done the time of like when we used to like have a meeting in person and then you know go have beer together which was fun too um, hopefully that'll happen soon yeah, well, write me back when that happens. Um, but it just, I mean, it's really, it's really been phenomenal. It's like, my, that was my, this was my first like engagement in the town. And it's been really, I just learned so much. I came in as like, still, I'm the, the, the one with the least knowledge. Um, and I just, the kindness and the enthusiasm and the spirit, I, I mean, let, least technical knowledge. You know, I, I work in health. You always said that, but you know way more than you think. Well, that's because I've been learning from you, Robin. Mm -hmm. So anyway, it, it's been amazing. And I really am thankful for the experience. And I'm thankful to all of you who have like so much energy and enthusiasm and you're doing amazing things for a town. So don't think I'm going away. I just uh, want somebody who is more reliable at meetings and can be more of an, an asset to the committee right now. Thank you. Sean, anything? Uh, yeah, I, I've really enjoyed my time on the committee these last few years. I've learned so much. And, uh, you know, similar to what Myra said, I feel like I don't have the bandwidth and energy to keep up with so many of you. And that's made me feel uh, uh, sometimes, uh, you know, like like I always should be doing more. And I do hope I can come back uh, at some point in the future and keep contributing. I'll keep contributing through the commitment I've made on the OSRP. Uh, and I'll report back to all of you on that. Um, so, but no, this has been wonderful. Uh, one thing I did share a little bit with Julian, I'll just mention here in terms of comment. Um, obviously, we've been through a lot with COVID and, you know, and that caused a rethinking of how we conduct meetings and how we interpret the open meetings law in Massachusetts. And I really see the upside of that in terms of accessibility. Uh, but I, and with, I don't want to sound selfish here. Um, but I do see a downside that I'm hoping uh, can be that there might be tweaks moving forward that can minimize this downside, which is why do many of us do these types of things in the first place? And it's to get to know more of our neighbors, get to be more involved. And as much as I've enjoyed getting to know you all through these meetings online, I've not met many of you in person. And um, there's a certain itch that I wasn't able to scratch because of that in terms of just being involved in my community. And here's the part where, again, it's going to sound selfish. I don't mean it to be. 
Um, just that unfortunately sitting in Zoom meetings talking about some of these things we're talking about is too much like my day job. Uh, <laughs> and that's why I want to go and clean up the trails instead of doing this to have something different. And I just mentioned that because I'm not saying that like, you know, oh, some grumpy person who doesn't want to sit in another five, six hours of Zoom meetings in a month. Uh, because he's doing too many of those already uh, is the reason to not be accessible to all the people who otherwise couldn't get to meetings. Um, if there's some way to keep that in-person part, be more salient. I, I know some of that's the limitations in how our town's interpreted and the availability of meeting spaces that allow for the uh, you know, simultaneous Zoom casting. I personally think that some of that could be interpreted differently to allow us to do it on personal equipment rather than need to be in a fully outfitted room. Um, those are things that I think that might allow us to still be very accessible, but make this more the in-person thing that might keep more volunteers in the mix, um, realizing also that there are people who couldn't participate uh, in other fo uh, formats who can participate in this one. So again, just something to think about because um, I personally would have loved to have been meeting with you all in person once a month and, and not just online. So, uh, but this has been great. I look forward to keep contributing through other ways. So Sean, when we go out for a drink after one of the meetings, then you'll come too? Yeah, I'll zoom in. No, no, yes, I will definitely be there. I, I, I will be there. No, we just we'll need to, we just need to file restaurant. the agenda for drinks three weeks in advance to make sure that- And we have students here, so. Yeah, okay, yeah. You know, William, are you a senior? Unfortunately not. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I thought you were going into all your... What year are you? I'm a junior. Okay. So you still have an exciting spring coming up, but not as. Okay, good. So hopefully we get you for another year as well. And, and I think we need to give a shout out to Dan, who's I think also leaving us that his yes. efforts on trying to rally um, a cohort of volunteers that we can tap into and, you know, hopefully that'll continue to grow you know i don't think any of us consider that as a um like you know the potential for that so so dan you're not here but thank you for your effort and i think we need to have him on the top of the volunteer list so he can uh, volunteer the volunteers he also made us some really great signs that we've been using at events yeah. and stuff so kudos to his sign making <laughs> He does not need to be in Wakefield to, to organize the volunteers. So yes, he said it himself. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, thanks, right. Sean and Myra. It's been great yeah. having you on the committee, and we'll definitely miss you. And uh, hopefully, we can all stay engaged and definitely come out for drinks when that happens in the near future. All right. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Ah, it's my last time. Are you going to miss <laughs> that? All right. Sean. Aye. Chris. Yes. Robin. Yes. Julie. Yes. And Myra. Yes. Yes. All right, guys. Have a great night. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank, Thank you, everyone. everyone.